It's great to have you join us tonight and to be able to sit under God's Word together. Uh, I pray it will be a a blessing for you and that you'll uh, go away convicted and challenged. So uh, let's get into it and we'll read our passage. The passage tonight is Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 13. Romans 12, 9 to 13. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Let's pray together. Our great God, we come before you and we are humbled to be able to come into your presence. You are so great, you are holy, beyond compare. Uh, Nothing that we see in this world is like you. You are so beyond us. And so we come humbly, recognizing that you are great, but you have made a way possible for us to speak with you. You've made a way possible for us to be saved through Christ. We thank you for him. And we thank you that we have salvation. And we pray tonight, God, that you would grow us, that you would teach us uh, what it is to live for you that you would show us what it is to be zealous for you. And we pray, God, that you would uh, burn your word on us, that you would convict us by your word, that your word would pierce us as a two-edged sword, and that we would go away changed and transformed for your glory. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That's the verse we want to focus on tonight. Uh, I want you to answer now at the beginning some questions, honestly, in your own mind. Do you see Christians around you that are zealous? Do you know many people who you would say are passionate for God's kingdom? Do you have a zeal for God? Would your friends and your family, those around you, would they describe you as someone who has a burning desire and a diligence to please God alone? Or would they say that you are more zealous for sport than you are for church? Would they say you're more zealous for your hobbies than you are for people's souls? Are you more zealous for worldly possessions than you are for spreading God's kingdom? Are you more zealous just to watch a movie than you are to meditate on God's word and and pray to Him? Are you more zealous for your own fame and success than you are? For God's glory. It scares me to say this, but as I look around at the church, at the Christian church, and my own life, I feel that zeal is deeply lacking. It's deeply lacking in us. Joel Beakey, he says this, Many churches today are looking less like armies engaged in war, but more like people taking a nap. Who amongst us hasn't seen this decay? Who cannot see a difference between the ancient church and us? In former days, a fire burned within Christians, but our hearts seldom, if ever, burn within us. Formerly, Christians seemed driven by a holy passion, but now little seems to motivate us. Christians of old were at war with their sin and they strove for holiness by heavenly strength. But we seem to tolerate sin and we're satisfied to do the minimum of what God requires of us. What has happened? God did not change. The power of salvation did not change. The call to holiness did not change. The threat of the enemy did not change. So why are so many Christians drowsy rather rather than being on fire for God. He's so right. So many Christians today have become like the Laodicean church and they are lukewarm, as Revelation 3 says. They are not zealous for God's ways. Christians, I I want to warn you, do not let the lukewarmness that is in so many Christians around you swamp over you. The church is so lukewarm in temperature and people start to think, Because of this, that it doesn't matter if I don't burn for God. But it does matter. It does matter. Something is wrong. And sadly, I think 
when some Christians look even at the zeal of those of old, the, the zeal of even Jesus and the apostles in the early church, they think it's too much. They think they're fanatics. It's because our zeal is so lacking. And, and so we need to be told, like Jesus said to the lukewarm Laodicean church, be zealous and repent. Be zealous and repent. We must do this. We are in a day and age where we need people who are zealous for God. We need people who have a strong enough zeal for God that they're willing to cut off sin. We need a strong enough zeal to stand against those opposing God. We need a strong enough zeal in us that will cause us to sacrifice great things for great causes, to see people's souls saved. We need Christians excited, enthusiastic about serving Christ, longing to be hot for the Lord, to be burning for the Lord, not lukewarm. Zeal is something that we must have as God's people. And one reason is because in our key verse here that we're looking at, Romans 12 verse 11, Paul calls us as Christians to never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Zeal is one of those attributes that Paul sees as, as a, essential for the Christian. Zeal must be in us. It's something we should be longing for because of our, our love for the Lord and our desire to please Him. We should want to be zealous. But also, zeal is a necessary overflow of the gospel. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, it says that Jesus gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. God saved us. God made us his people. He's purified us as his people so that we would be zealous for good works. That's why Christ died. He died to create zeal in you. So has God's salvation done that? Has the salvation you have in Christ brought about zeal in you. Zeal for good works. Christian zeal is something we must have. And if we are to have it, we, we need to know what it is. We need to know how we get it and how we fuel it. And we need to know as well what's going to stop it from burning out in us. So let's look now. What is zeal? This is the first question we need to think about. And I, th I think our passage answers this. And we're going to see that zeal, to be someone who is zealous, they are someone who is focused on one thing. Focused on one thing. For the Christian, someone who is zealous as a Christian is someone who has a burning passion to please God. That's Christian zeal. A burning passion and a diligence to please God alone. And if it becomes a passion for anything else, then it is no longer Christian zeal. Christians can be zealous and enthusiastic about so many things, a lot of things, but it's not Christian zeal unless it is for the Lord, His ways, and His kingdom. Samuel Ward, a Puritan, says this, Zeal is nothing but heat, heat, spiritual heat, wrought in the heart of man for the best service and furtherance of God's glory. And John Reynolds says, he defines zeal as this, an earnest desire and concern for all things pertaining to the glory of God and the kingdom of the Lord Jesus among men. That's zeal. But now, let's look at our passage, Romans 12, verse 11, and dig more closely at what zeal is. And here we see a negative and a positive call relating to zeal. And then we see as well, at the end of the verse, the focus of our zeal. And these three things here work together. These three aspects work together that we're going to see to keep us from taking zeal too far and certain aspects of zeal too far. So what do we see here about zeal? Romans 12 verse 11. The first thing we see about zeal is that Christian zeal is diligent. Verse 11 says, Paul says to the Christian, never be lacking in zeal. Never be lacking in zeal. This word uh, that is zeal here, that's translated uh, as zeal here, is sometimes translated as diligence in other Bibles, in other translations. The root of this word has the idea to do something with speed, haste, and exertion. 
when you look at this word used throughout the New Testament, you see that the noun of this word, which is used in our verse, it's often translated as earnestness, eagerness, great care or effort, and sometimes it can be used to refer to haste and hurrying, which is how the verb is normally used through the New Testament. So this, this word here for zeal, it's normally connected with a hurriedness, an eagerness, and great effort. And interestingly, Romans chapter 12, verse 8, uses the same word there for zeal, for those relating to those who lead. And the NIV there translates it as diligence. So the first aspect of zeal here that we're seeing is that it is something of haste and diligence. Or we might say eager effort. It's to live, to work hard with all that we are for Christ. Don't be lacking in that kind of zeal, says Paul. Hard work and diligence, they are key. They're key for the Christian to spiritually grow. We must be disciplined and diligent in pleasing God. That is Christian zeal. And and what a challenge for us in this season of lockdown, as lockdown may be breeding laziness in us. The call comes, do not be lazy. Be diligent for the Lord. Seek to serve the Lord with haste. Eagerly serve Him with a hurried, continual effort for Him. John MacArthur says about this word here and this verse, he says, There is no room for laziness in the work of the Lord. It demands hastiness, a hurry, a spirit that is moving fast. As Jesus says as well, he says, while it is day, we have to work. There's work to do for the night comes when no man can work. So work hard now. Get things done for the Lord. Don't be lazy in how you are zealous for God. Do lots for the Lord and battle that laziness and procrastination that so often creeps in. But don't just hurry. And do, do, do. Don't just hurry. Some of us have this tendency to just be doers. But the next phrase in our verse actually corrects an overemphasis of just doing things. Next, we see another aspect of zeal. It's it's not just doing something. It's actually feeling something too. We see secondly in this verse that Christian zeal is a passionate desire. Romans 12.11 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Now, these two phrases uh, convey similar ideas here, but each is actually just quite distinct, and they actually add a depth to one another. The, the word for but isn't in the original and shouldn't be probably put there because it makes us think of their, them contrasting each other and therefore possibly just conveying a very similar idea and the, the exact same idea, but they're actually adding depth to one another. This second phrase here, It conveys the emotional passion and enthusiasm connected to zeal. That burning desire of zeal. The word fervor in this verse can actually literally be translated boil. It could be literally translated here, boil in spirit. Boil in your spirit with desire and passion for the Lord. Zeal is when our affections for God boil over in us. They boil up. So when we are zealous, we need to not just do things, but we need to burn with desire as we serve the Lord. Zeal is something we must feel. Don't just be people who who get things done, but be someone who boils for Jesus in your spirit as you serve Him. But also, as we've seen, zeal isn't just passion. It's not just boiling up. It's not just that boiling desire and burning desire. Zeal puts those desires into practice with diligence and effort, as we saw in our first point, the first phrase of the verse. And so we see here that we must strive for both a diligent doing and a passionate desire. Both a diligent doing and a passionate desire for the Lord. We must be passionate doers for the Lord. We must must burn. We must boil up. We must burn for Christ with joy, with enthusiasm, with excitement. We must boil with zeal for the Lord as we work hard for Him. 
So zeal is both a burning desire and a diligence in doing things for the Lord. But what is it for? Well, we've said it. What are we to be passionate and working hard for? What is the focus of our zeal? Where are we aiming it at? Well, the final phrase in verse 11 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That's our third point there about Christian zeal. Christian zeal is devotion to the Lord. This shows what our zeal must be for. Christian zeal is for the Lord, a desire to please Him alone. It's easy to be enthusiastic. It's easy to be uh, hurried, working hard in various things. But you need to ask yourself, who's it for? Who's it for? Is it for the Lord or is it for yourself? If it's not for the Lord, it's not Christian zeal. So many people, so many Christians have zeal, have great desire, great passion, but it's misplaced. It's for their sports team. It's for a car. It's for an investment property. It's for their family. It's for their garden, their traveling, their latest hobby. Enthusiasm, passion, eagerness, hard work. They're not Christian zeal on their own. Christian zeal doesn't end with diligence and desire. It must be for the Lord with a desire to please Him. Christian is not just earnest and enthusiastic and ecstatic. They are consumed by one thing, fixated on one thing, focused on one thing, pleasing God. That's Christian zeal. And so to be zealous for God alone, it means we, we must run away from everything else. If we are to be focused on one thing and zealous for God, we must run from the world. We must stop pursuing it and stop being zealous for everything in the world. As Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Christian zeal is devoted to God alone. A Christian is a person of one thing. To be zealous actually has the same idea of what we see in the Old Testament of being wholehearted, wholehearted devotion to God. That's Christian zeal. Like what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, he says, One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And in Acts 20, verse 24, he says, I do not account my life of any value or as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. This is zeal, according to Paul. Devotion to God alone and to the gospel. That is zeal. J.C. Ryle, J.C. Ryle, who wrote in the 1800s, lived in the 1800s, he wonderfully sums up what zeal is and says this, zeal in Christianity is a burning desire to please God, to do His will and to advance His glory in the world in every possible way. It is a desire which is not natural to men and women. It is a desire which the Spirit puts in the heart of every believer when they are converted to Christ. However, a desire which some believers feel so much more strongly than others that they alone deserve to be called zealous men and women. This desire is so strong when it really reigns in a person that it impels them to make any sacrifice, to go through any trouble, to deny themselves anything, to suffer, to work, to labor, to toil, to spend themselves and be spent and even to die if only they please God and honor Christ. That is zeal. And it's something we as believers should all have to some degree. Paul expects it in our passage when he says, never be lacking in zeal. But it is also something that only certain people will have to a greater degree. There may be times as a Christian where we won't have this as much. But Paul calls for it to never be lacking in, a, in us. So we need to seek that we would never lack this. You need to check in yourself. Is this what you have? A passion, a burning desire for God's glory, which actually comes to fruition in a diligence and a deep effort 
to serve him. That is Christian zeal. We must have it. Let's seek it. We must seek it. But what will fuel and guide it? What should we pursue in our lives to help bring about true zeal in us? Well, we must go to the context surrounding verse 11 in Romans 12. Because here, verse 11, it's part of a bigger context and theme. And in this bigger context, we get a series of Christian character. We see here Christian character and many key things, many key things that must come alongside Christian zeal. Romans 12, 9 to 13 is one of the richest passages on Christian living. It's like a condensed version of the Sermon on the Mount with 13 calls and commands for the Christian. And these verses show what genuine Christians look like. And so I want to look over this section and look at some of these key characteristics and see how zeal zeal relates to some of these characteristics. Because all Christian character, all Christian character is intertwined. And each character in the Christian life, each element of our character is necessary to balance and guide the other characteristics that we are called to. So let's look at how they interact and intertwine with zeal. Have a look at verse 9. It begins, Romans 12 verse 9 begins literally saying, genuine love, sincere love. It's like a title for the section. And here we have the first thing that needs to characterize zeal and fuel it and guide it. It's genuine love. We firstly need to seek genuine love. If we are to have Christian zeal, we must have genuine love. Verse 9, verse 10. Have a look. Romans 12, verse 9 and 10 say, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Love must guide our zeal. It must guide what we do. Else we can become harsh and overbearing fanatics. Some actually think it's, it's shameful. Some people think it's shameful to be called a zealous Christian because they misunderstand zeal. By zeal, I don't mean thoughtless, harsh fanatics. No, we are, as Christians who are zealous, we are to be loving zealots for the good of people's souls and for God's glory. Richard, Richard Sibbs, he says, there is no true zeal to God's glory unless it is joined with true love to men. Therefore, let men that are violent, injurious, and insolent never talk of glorifying God so long as they despise poor men. Our zeal must be driven by love. If it is to be genuine and true, it must be driven by genuine love, brotherly love that looks to the interests of others, that sees the good of others and seeks that above their own good. That's the first thing that will fuel zeal and guide a true zeal in us. But what else will fuel and guide true zeal in us? Well, the second thing is we must hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Verse 9 says it. Romans 12 verse 9. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Zeal must be centered on glorifying God and following His ways. We must be zealous for God's honor, like Phineas was in Numbers 25. When we see what dishonors God, zeal must burn up and grow up in us so that we desire to put that to an end. And we need to be zealous for God's justice on evil and zealous for God's ways and for good to come about, for everything that is in line with God's law to come about. Hating what is evil and clinging to what is good, that must guide our zeal. That guides and drives our zeal. But next, thirdly, what should fuel and guide true zeal in us? Well, it is to be joyful in hope. Verse 12 says, after that, uh, that verse on zeal that we've looked at, verse 12 says, be joyful in hope. Hope will fuel zeal. The hope we have in Jesus and the joy that comes with it should fuel zeal in us. That's why the, at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, at the end of a chapter filled with the hope of the resurrection, Paul says in the very last verse, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We are to be doing lots for the Lord and hope will fuel this. 
That's why David as well in Psalm 51 says and prays, Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Joy in the gospel and our salvation will bring about a zeal for God's kingdom and a zeal for God's ways. So we must be joyful in hope to breed zeal in us. Cherish the gospel more. Be joyful in the hope you have to grow zeal in you. Fourthly, what will fuel and guide true zeal in us will be patient in affliction. Verse 12, Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. The difficult thing with zeal and passion is to keep it going when the times get tough. It's hard to keep zeal going. When we are zealous for the Lord, we're going to face difficulty and we need to be patient in that affliction if we are to keep our zeal. We need to endure through the affliction. We need to be consistent in our zeal through difficulty. And we need to realize too that some of the difficulty will actually come from those within the church. You see that again and again throughout church history. Difficulty will come through those within the church as well. People who will be lukewarm and who will not like genuine Christian zeal. They will oppose you because they will have instead in mind the things of men, not the things of God. And you will need to say to them when they oppose you and afflict you, you will need to say, get behind me, Satan, as Jesus did with Peter when he had in mind the things of men, not the things of God. You will need to endure in affliction. And you will need to endure in the affliction you will face, even in the church. And to do this, you will need to be warm-blooded, keeping a constant heat for the Lord. Your own heat for the Lord, empowered by God's Spirit. Don't be cold-blooded where you take on the lukewarmness of those around you, of the so-called Christians that surround you. No, instead, be careful of the lukewarmness that surrounds you and of the Christians that may even seek to afflict you so-called Christians that may seek to afflict you, or of the world that will seek to afflict you and steal your zeal. Be on guard against that. John Reynolds says about this point here, about zeal, he says, zeal may be sweet, zeal may meet with storms, it may meet with stones and stumbling blocks, but its design, the design of zeal, is to hold on and march through all to the end. That is zeal. And so to fuel and guide true zeal in in, in us, we must be patient in affliction. And then finally, the fifth point here that I just want to bring out is that we must be faithful in prayer. That's the final point to what will fuel and guide zeal in us. We must be faithful in prayer. Romans 12 verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This last phrase in verse 12 is key to growing zeal in us. Zeal comes from the Lord. It's a gift that He must give to us. Zeal must be empowered by God's Spirit if it is to last in our lives. And so if you long for the zeal that we've talked about, if you long for the zeal that we've seen in verse 11, then you need to get on your knees and seek it. Seek it from the Lord. Be constant and diligent in prayer. Seeking for God to give you a burning passion for Him and a diligence to serve Him and seek to please Him alone. Cry out to Him for the zeal that we have seen. These are the things we must do. If we are to grow zeal in us, if we are to fuel zeal in our lives and ensure it doesn't burn out in us, these are the things we must do. We must seek genuine love. We must hate what is evil, cling to what is good. We must be joyful in our hope. We must be patient in affliction. We must be faithful in prayer. But finally, one final thing that will help guide zeal in us, that will help grow true zeal in us. And it's looking at, I think, the false ways of zeal. There are some false ideas of zeal that are out there. There are a few ways that zeal can grow, go wrong. There are types of zeal that we must avoid. And I think by looking at that, it will help grow in us genuine zeal. So firstly, what are the types of zeal that we must avoid? Well, we first must avoid a zeal that burns out. How do we be zealous without burnout? 
How do we have a zeal for the Lord that doesn't go too far where we destroy ourselves and aren't useful for Him anymore? Well, look at the things we looked at just before, those five things, those other elements of Christian character that need to also be in our lives, those ones that surround verse 11, they are going to help fuel and guide true zeal and they are going to stop it from burning out in us. But I don't have time to say much more on that point about how to stop zeal burning out in us. But what I do want to do is recommend a book on that. There's a great book by Christopher Ash called Zeal Without Burnout, Seven Keys to a Lifelong Ministry of Sustainable Sacrifice. It's a great book and in it he shows that if we are to be zealous for the Lord, we must not forget that we are frail. He says, we need sleep, but God does not. We need Sabbaths, but God does not. We need friends, but God does not. We need food, but God does not. If we are to avoid zeal that burns out, we need to remember that. And we must. We must avoid a zeal that burns out. That's the first zeal that must be avoided. Also, we need to avoid a zeal that is misplaced. Avoid a zeal that is misplaced. In Galatians 1 verse 14, Paul says, I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul says, As for zeal, I was persecuting the church. Look at the depth of Paul's zeal. This is the zeal he had before he was a Christian, and it was great, but it was misplaced. It was against God, against His ways. To have true zeal, it must be God-centered, as we've seen. God is glorious, and so we must long to see Him honored above all else. That should be our longing. That is what characterizes true zeal. And so we must be sure, as we are zealous, that we don't misplace our zeal for something else. We must be sure that we aren't just zealous for anything else, for this world or anything in it. We must be zealous for God alone and avoid a misplaced zeal. Third, we must avoid a zeal that isn't based on knowledge. In Romans chapter 10, verse 2, Paul says about the Jews, and he says this, For I can testify about them, the Jews, that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. The Jews, when Jesus came, they'd failed to see him as the Messiah, and they'd failed to see the righteousness that can come from God. And so all their zeal for the law of God, it was vain. And your zeal needs to be based on truth. It needs to be based on God's word or it will be useless. It will be useless if it's not based on knowledge. Our zeal it must be guided by God's word and the wisdom that he gives to us. And we must be only zealous for the things that God's word confirms. And so we need to get to know what God loves, what he hates. We need to get to know his word if we are to have a zeal based on knowledge and have a truer zeal. So daily time in God's Word is so key. Daily time in God's Word is key to have a zeal that is based on knowledge. And then finally, this fourth false zeal that can come about, this fourth zeal that we must avoid, what is it? Well, it is a zeal out of wrong motives. Galatians 4, 17 to 18, Paul says, Those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us, so that you may be zealous for them. It is fine to be zealous, provided the purpose is good, and to be so always, not just when I am with you. Here in Galatians, Paul warns of a people, these people that are zealous, and they're just trying to create their own following, following from the Galatian church. People can be zealous just for their own gain. Zealous for their church, just zealous for their denomination, or just zealous to gain praise from people. But zeal that is not done for God's glory, for the motive of glorifying God is false, and it is worth nothing, because God looks at the heart. He sees the motive. He sees what you're really doing. He sees why you're doing it. The heart and the motive matter to God, not just how much work you've done, how much zeal it seems you've had and how much work you've done, it matters on the motive and why you are zealous. And so we must avoid a zeal that is out of wrong motives. So let me ask you, what is your zeal like? Where is your zeal for God? Do you have it? Are you zealous for God? 
for his kingdom? Or are you zealous for wrong things? Not zealous for the things of God, but zealous for the things in this world. Is your zeal misplaced? Or is it done for wrong motives? Are you just listening to this sermon? Are you just going along to church when you can go? And are you just acting like a Christian? But really you're lukewarm. And you don't have a zeal for God's kingdom. You don't have a zeal to see souls saved. And you have more zeal for just the next movie you want to watch, for sport, for your family, the latest craze. Where is your zeal? Where is it placed? If you are like this, if your zeal is misplaced like that, I urge you, as Jesus says to the Laodicean church, be zealous and repent. Be zealous and repent, or Jesus will spit you out of his mouth and reject you, as he says to the Laodiceans in Revelation 3. Be zealous and repent. And sinner, if you aren't saved, come and see the zeal that the Lord had for you. Come and see the way that he worked and desired to shed his blood for sinners. How zeal for the Father filled him. How he was focused on pleasing the Father. Look at how all that he did. Look at all that he did in dying for you, in suffering for you. How he burned with a passion for your soul, which led him to the cross. How he was condemned for you. Look at this. And come and put all your hope in the zealous Savior, Jesus. Come to your senses and see all he has done to give you eternal life. And then because of this, with a passion, devote your life to be zealous for him. Walk in the zeal that he had for you. And if you are lukewarm in your love for Jesus, if you've grown cold and lukewarm, realize that your complacency so contradicts all that you have in Christ. You are blind to Jesus if you aren't zealous for him. You're blind to what you have in Christ if you have no burning passion for him and to see the good news of salvation spread. So be zealous if you are lukewarm. Be zealous and repent, as Jesus says again in Revelation 3, because Jesus gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Jesus died to make us zealous for good works. So seek to have a burning desire and diligence in you, to be devoted to the Lord. Pursue that boiling passion and persistent effort to please the Lord, as we saw in our passage. Pursue that. Be zealous for our Saviour, king and for the kingdom of salvation that he can bring be zealous for those things and friends never be lacking in zeal but boil in your spirit serving the lord let's pray hard that god would give us this kind of zeal we need it let's pray and seek that he would give it to us let's pray Great God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for how it can pierce us. Thank you for how it can bring conviction. We pray for our lives. We ask, God, that you would burn in us a zeal for you, a passion for you. You can bring it about. You can give it. And we pray, God, that you would cause us to be people who hunger for it. May we seek this zeal for you from you until we have it. And may we continue to seek it from you every day. Please, God, may you put zeal in this church. May you put a passion, a burning passion, a boiling passion in this church for your kingdom. May they boil with passion and desire and diligence to spread the good news of Christ. Please, God, put this in them. Put this in me more. And I pray, God, that you would be using us for your glory and that all we do will be done out of this motive. May we have a hunger to please you, God, to please you alone. May we be focused on you alone and may this guide all that we do. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us and I pray you'll have a good week.